Hi there guys, Tom Quayle here. Hope everybody's doing very well indeed as ever in internet land. Today I want to talk you through a really, really cool thing that I've been discovering whilst using the Quad Cortex here. Now, up front, this is not a video that Neural DSP have asked me to do. This is something that I've just discovered basically through experimentation and just having some ideas about incorporating the plugins that I already own with the Quad Cortex, so the software plugins. What I'm going to show you here is a super powerful hybrid setup that you can do with any modeling device which functions as an audio interface. So in this instance, the Quad Cortex here has an ASIO driver, in fact, a really good quality ASIO driver that Neural have put together, which is very low latency. And if you're on a Mac, the Quad Cortex is class compliant. Well, not class compliant, it's core audio compliant, which means you don't need a driver installed for it to work and you get very low latencies. Now, what this means is that you can utilize a device like this or the AxeFX3. I presume you can do this with the FM3 from, line, uh, from Fractal Audio or the Line 6 Helix, maybe. I'm not sure about those products, but you can certainly do this with the AxeFX3. You can run hybrid rigs where you incorporate software-based plugins into your hardware signal chain. So effectively, what I've got here is the Quad Cortex running a couple of different amp models. But in exactly the same preset, I have multiple scenes set up here that are utilizing the brand new SLO100 plugin and the 14 Kali suite from Neural DSP. That's really important at this point to say, of course, those plugins are running on my computer. But the cool thing about the way the Quad Cortex works, and of course the AxeFX3 does the same thing, multiple different products do this, is you have multiple different USB inputs and outputs. So in the same way that you can think of your hardware in I.O. or inputs and outputs, so on the Quad Cortex you've got two inputs and then you've got uh, four outputs or outputs one and two and outputs three and four. There's also some different inputs for like loops and send and returns. Those hardware inputs and outputs you also have kind of USB or if you like software inputs and outputs, which means that you can take audio from your computer and route it back into the signal chain, or you can take audio from the Quad Cortex and route it into your computer for processing via software plugins, either in your DAW or standalone. Now the cool thing about the Neural DSP plugins is that when you install them, you don't only get the DAW version, but you also get the standalone version. And what you might not realize is if you've got a relatively modern computer, and it doesn't need to be that modern, if you're running a laptop, anything you know reasonably high spec from Apple or a decently high spec or medium spec Windows laptop, not a low powered Ultrabook, but a decently sized sort of 15, 17 inch laptop, should be able to run multiple instances of plugins. And the cool thing is the way that Neural DSP have designed their driver, it can be utilized at the same time via, with multiple plugins. So if we just move over to Windows here, and by the way, I've tested this on an M1 Mac. I have a MacBook Air, the lowest powered M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and this works flawlessly. So you can also do this on those. I'm running here a 12 core Ryzen 3900X CPU. It's about 4% of my CPU is used by running both of these plugins. So here in Windows, I've got the SLO100 and the 14 Kali suite. And the way this is set up is basically these are in standalone mode. And you can see as I play, there is audio when you look at the meters going into both of them. Now you're not hearing them at the moment, you're hearing a high watt clean amp from the Quad Cortex. This scene here, Quad Cortex clean with delay. Um, so that's all running via the modeling on the Quad Cortex. But I'm using USB output one from the Quad Cortex to send into both of these plugins on my computer. So if I go to the settings page here for both of these, you'll be able to see that I'm using the ASIO driver, which on a PC on Windows, you need to download that from the Neural DSP website and install it. On a Mac, you don't need to do that. It's just going to work straight out of the box. Select that driver here and make sure that you've got the Neural DSP uh, Quad Cortex driver selected here in the audio um, device. Then the magic happens. In the audio input, what you're going to do is select input one. And that corresponds to the hardware input that you're using. Okay. So here, if it's input one or input two, make sure you've selected the right one. It might be one of the send and returns as well. You can also send USB audio. So audio from one of the software or USB outputs to the plugins. And that could be really useful if you wanted to process an existing amp model with some of the effects from the plugins. You're really not going to notice that much latency, which you know, I'll show you in a second why that's the case. So here, what I want to do is I've selected input one. If you wanted to select one of the USB inputs, you would do it down here. 
both the same, both plugins exactly the same. Then what I want to do is I want to select the output that I want to send the USB signal or the signal from my plugin back to the quad cortex. Now, what I've done here, and this is the clever bit, not on my part, but just in terms of the way the driver is designed, is you've got two stereo pairs of USB outputs that you can utilize to send audio back to the quad cortex. And that's output five and six and output seven and eight. Now here on the SLO plugin, I've used outputs five and six. And on the, um, the Fortin Cali suite, I've used outputs seven and eight. So that means I'm sending stereo audio back on two different USB return channels to the quad cortex. Now here, you can hopefully see on the display, out USB five and six is selected on this input. So I'm sending the audio from the SLO plugin back to the quad cortex and I've selected it just here as my input. Okay, that is then going to outputs one and two of my audio device, which is these two outputs here going to my audio interface. The Fortin Cali suite is going via USB seven and eight back to the quad cortex and I've selected that input here and then that's going to output one and two. Now that means that I've got the SLO on this lane, the Fortin Cali suite on this lane, and then these upper two lanes here are all internal quad cortex stuff. So I'm running a clean, a clean amp, which is my uh, high watt, and then underneath I've got a neural capture of my Marshall Silver Jubilee, which is just over here, which I did when I first got the Quad Cortex. And all of this is set up in such a way that when I switch between the scenes, I'm only hearing the amp that I want to hear. And the way I've done that is, essentially on these output blocks here, if I only wanted to hear the SLO, for instance, what I can do is I can select the output for the Quad Cortex amps and just run their volume at zero. So if I select, oops, if I select this SLO 100 plugin scene here, and we look at this output for the quad cortex, it's on off. The output for the SLO is at zero dB, so full volume effect. And then the output for the Kali suite, the 14 Kali suite is off as well. So on this preset, you're only hearing the, the SLO. <laughs> Now, the great thing about Neural DSP's driver is that if we look back at Windows here, when I select 64 samples here, they are quoting 1.3 milliseconds of delay. You're not gonna get better than that running the, the internal amp models from the Quad Cortex. Now, a little caveat there. I don't know whether that's accurate, that 1.3 milliseconds quote. I also don't know whether that's round trip latency, i.e. audio going in and then back out again. I highly doubt it is. Um, it's probably just the internal um, analog to digital conversion that's going on and then the processing that's happening, not the return um, processing that's happening through the quad cortex, of course. But the really important thing is I cannot feel any discernible latency that's causing me issues. When I'm playing all that fast legato stuff, it feels fine. So as so long as you set your buffer size low on both plugins, do the same thing for the 14 Cali suite. They have to be set the same. You can't have one different to the other. You'll get all sorts of issues. And in fact, the driver won't let you do that. So they have to be the same. Basically set this as low as you can go on your computer before you start getting audio artifacts and weird pops and clicks and issues. And if you've got, like I've got like a 12 core or 16 core machine, or if you've got one of the new MacBooks, um, or if you've got, you know, later down the line, if anyone's watching this in like a year's time, if you've got one of the new Apple Silicon super high powered Macs, you won't have an issue with this at all. Um, so just test that out. One other quick thing to mention is that the Quad Cortex also does um, USB MIDI. So you can, if I close these down, see this little MIDI logo here on these presets. I can switch to those via MIDI program change messages on the Quad Cortex. Now Neural DSP, if you are listening, uh, I would love to have MIDI capable switching or switching you know, MIDI capability on scene changes, if you can do that, that would be absolutely insane because then I could switch scenes and have presets change on the plugins, on the software plugins, which is just nuts. So what we've got now is, or are, eight different scenes utilizing various different software plugins, either the Fortin or the SLO, or the internal modeling of the Quad Cortex. And you can combine these in any way you like. I'm processing the sounds of the SLO and the Fortin plugins with effects from the Quad Cortex. So on the SLO, I'm running a pitch shifter to knock me down a whole tone. I'm also running two EQ blocks as well. And the Fortin Cali suite has no effects built in. It's got no reverb and delay. It's unique 
in the neural DSP um, lineup for that. It's got no effects at all. So I'm running a delay and a reverb on that one. So if we switch over to the 14 Kali Suite plugin here, you can hear I'm running those blocks there. And if I bypass them, bypass the reverb, now we're just hearing it dry. Just to show you that is the 14 Kali Suite that we're hearing here. Let's just have a quick mess around with it. So. Again, I am not experiencing any discernible latency and I am processing things twice in effect. So it's really incredible the power that you've got here if you can run those buffer sizes low enough. So let's go through some of these scenes. If I just show you really quickly, here is my quad cortex clean. This is the high watt amp running with delay, some reverb and a little bit of compression as well. Now we'll switch over to the SLO uh, plugin. Uh, this is again running on my computer. Okay, let's switch over to the 14 Cali here, which again, I'm running delay and reverb on the actual quad cortex. <laughs> Okay, the next preset, or not preset, I should say scene, is the SLO, but I've dropped via a pitch shifter on the quad cortex. So it's coming in via the SLO plugin, and there's a, um, a pitch shifter which is dropping it down a tone. <laughs> And again, incredibly, I'm not discerning any major latency at all. I can play absolutely fine, even with that pitch shifter on there as well. And even though the, the actual um, you know, processing of the amp sound is being done via the plugin rather than the quad cortex itself, it's nuts. Okay, the next one is a stereo version of both the 14 suite and the SLO 100 with the 14 pan hard left and the SLO pan hard right, I believe, or vice versa. So here's just the SLO. <laughs> And of course, that's without the pitch shifter. Here they are in stereo. Pretty huge sound, and again, you can hear there's no latency issues. They're not kind of like phasing and out with each other. They're running really fast, very, very clean signal path, and of course, being processed by the effects on the quad cortex as well. Then we've got a quad cortex exclusively clean sound, but with chorus on, so the same high watt. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now I'm going to bring in some neural capture stuff. So we've got the Silver Jubilee here, this amp that's actually been uh, captured by the Quad Cortex. So this is using a cab that's built into the Quad Cortex and some delay and reverb as well. <laughs> And then finally, the same amp, but processed with a really large reverb for a kind of ambient lead tone. So again, like you can hear, the, the kind of possibilities here are absolutely insane in terms of, you know, bringing in the software world or the plugin world into the hardware world here with the Quad Cortex. So at this point, Neural DSP haven't incorporated their plugins that people have been buying into the Quad Cortex. Now they may do that in the future. I think they've been saying that they will do, but you can totally use them at this stage. If you've got a fast enough computer, you can absolutely use them and incorporate them here and process you know, the sound from the Quad Cortex via the plugins or the plugins via the Quad Cortex. It's totally insane. And again, super fast switching. nuts to think that some of that that you just heard was plugins running on a computer some of it was the quad cortex modeling itself some of it was the neural capture stuff it's incredible really what you can do again just to reiterate this is totally possible on axe effects 3 as well but you which i have behind me i've done it it's a little more complicated to set up um, because you don't have the kind of functionality of the touch screen to do this with but using axe edit it's totally possible you can do it just make sure that you are fully aware of kind of change setting the volumes for the different lanes making sure that you're doing all of the adjustment for each scene, but you know, that's not what this video is about. It's just to show you that you can create these hybrid rigs with software and hardware that were never possible before with totally usable, almost non-existent latencies. Okay guys, so there we go. I hope you found that useful and interesting, and it's kind of inspired you to mess around with combining hardware and software in ways that were never possible before. Uh, again, it's so easy to do on the Quad Cortex. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. That would really help me out. And of course, make sure you hit the bell notification icon to make sure you never miss any more of my content again. Check out tomquail.co.uk, my website, and you'll find a bunch of different lessons. There's a bunch of theory lessons, improvisation lessons, particularly legato lessons. Check out Modern Legato 1, 2, and 3. And of course, my Ultimate Legato Practice Toolkit if you really want to nail your legato playing for 2021. All right, guys, thanks for watching. My name's Tom Quail, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.